I venture out of the mansion and into the world, and on those even fewer occasions in which I'm spotted in public, there is one question I'm frequently asked. I imagine that question would be, when will you retire? Not even remotely close, Livingston. Why, someone has awoken on the wrong side of life this morning. Only on the days when I'm compelled to participate in this program, sir. Your enthusiasm brings light and laughter to the entire state, my good fellow. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Bandall, the precious young lady at the right portion of your screen who loves small animals, butterflies, and has arrest warrants bearing her name in seven states would be my adorably treacherous housemate, Tangella, and the grumbling bloke wrapped up in the tuxedo whom you've already met would be my ever gleeful valet, Mr. Livingston. Back to the topic of my public queries. The question I'm frequently asked by viewers is, why do you have so many theater operators as guests on your show? And the answer is quite simple. They are, in effect, horror hosts themselves. They welcome guests into their homes and offer them comfort as they thrill them with the adrenaline rush afforded by watching a wonderful horror film. No, love, I imagine theater operators do not tie up their guests and toss them into the well after the film has concluded. And joining us tonight will be Mr. Roger Roten, operator of the Sebastiani Theater in Sonoma, California. He'll tell us all about his theater, the many events hosted there, and offer his insights into tonight's film, which so happens to be Adam Age Vampire. However, do not be deceived by the title. The original Italian name of this film was Sedoc, the Heir of Satan, which obviously has nothing to do with the Manhattan Project, Plutonium, Half-Lives, or Chernobyl. So stay with us for another glamorous night of ionized fright here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. This is your Mac. 
It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. <laughs> but before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television, coming up. It's another Saturday night here at Creature Features, and I'm here, and you're here, and with us is Mr. Roger Roten. Now, you, you do something quite unique. You operate a very old cinema. That's right. Theater. Yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like a real theater, though, with a stage, Full stage and all that stuff. That's in Sonoma, Sonoma, California. How long have you been doing this? Uh, about 27 years. 27 years. That's a long time. It is a long time. You must, you must know everything about movie projectors and lights and popcorn. Well, those are three things that you have to know about. Those are the most important things. So you're joining us tonight. We're going to talk about your theater and the stuff you do and all kinds of shows. He has all kinds of wonderful shows there. I've been to like, I think, 20. No, 10. I've been <laughs> to 10 shows there. And uh, we're going to watch this Adam Age vampire film. Have you seen it? Uh, no. No. All right, so it's going to be a surprise for everyone, maybe you as well, because uh, I've not seen it. Roger has not seen the film, but I understand it's, uh, it's all right. We'll it's not bad. It. It's Italian. Do you speak Italian? No. You don't need to because they dubbed it in English. <laughs> all right. It's nice, but it's not proper English. It's like, I don't know, different English. All right, so let's start the film. When we come back, we're going to talk all about Roger and his theater and all kinds of fun stuff, right? Sounds good to me. Off we go to Adam Age Vampire. Stay with us. Try to get it through your head, Jeanette. I only came in to tell you goodbye. Goodbye? Pierre! It's all over. You had your choice? Either me or the so-called profession you're working at. You're still working, so that means I'm through. Oh, please don't treat me like this. You know your ship is about to sail. It's better for us. It's easier if I go away. Easier to what? To suffer even more than we both have already? You know we belong to each other, Pierre. Oh, please, Jeanette. That's in the snow. No. Pierre! Yeah. 
move on. There's some other people out there. They want you to do another number. I won't do another number. I'm fed up with this job. eyes of Professor Moray, there isn't a bit of hope for me, mutilated, disfigured, forever. You might as well be prepared for the worst, but it won't make any difference to someone who really loves you. I don't want to be pitied by anyone, especially by him. Oh, leave me alone. At least drink a cup of tea. Leave me alone. <laughs> She has no family here, not even friends close enough to worry about her. The newspapers made that clear. Go to her. Does anyone know you in that clinic? No one. And no one must know that Jeanette Morineau is coming here. No one will know. I have complete faith in you as always. And I know that I shall succeed. You're going to need me. I'll be here, Albert. all hope yet. Who are you? Don't ask me questions. There isn't time. I'm an assistant to a great scientist who has come to hear of your case and wants to know more about you. He wants to give you treatment. What's the use of treatment? What's the use? You have to believe me. We have discovered a new therapy together and it's miraculous. I guarantee it. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Now, don't tell me you're here because you want to interview me. You don't think so? Oh, well, then I won't tell you that. Did you read about that girl? Who do you mean? Oh, come on. What about this for a big headline? Jeanette Morineau, happy and beautiful as ever. Think of the mad publicity for your clinic here. Sure, but that's one headline you are never going to see in print. Why not? Doctor, we're waiting for your answer. At round. your service. So long, Leroy. See so you on. Long. No secrecy is necessary. And I mean absolutely. Not a word to a soul. This is the only hope you have. Keep that in mind, always. You will drop out of sight for a short time. Three or four weeks at the very most. And when you reappear, everything will be as it was before. As if you had awakened from a horrible dream. Don't you believe me? Well, then do just as you wish. I have never been to see you. But we'll be expecting you. Night. 
Now, don't disappoint me. I am not being immodest when I speak of a whole new era in the field of biology and therapy. The destructive and degenerative effect of atomic explosions have driven scientists more than ever before into research involving methods and processes of regeneration, rebuilding abnormal or totally destroyed cells. It is completely successful in correcting abnormal cell growth as well as in restoring cells which have been destroyed. Just as good often grows out of evil, Derma 28 has grown out of Derma 25, the serum which provoked an accelerated abnormal development of cells. When I finally succeeded in stabilizing its effects, I produced the anti-cancer vaccine, which for years had been the major goal of the most important scientific research. Repeated experiments using Derma 28 on specimens deformed by injections of Derma 25 prove its miraculous efficiency beyond a doubt. A single injection of Derma 28. Monique, what are you doing? Don't you realize? Why, oh, you must be completely insane. Yes, it's the Derma 25 serum that we've been injecting in so many of those poor little animals. Transforming them into monsters. You're aware of its effects. Look at that. Come on. You'll have to be exposed to treatment at once in the radiation chamber. No. Give me an injection of Derma 28. But you know it's never been tried on human beings. I wouldn't have the courage. That's just why I did it, to force you to have the courage. No, let's wait for the girl, Jeanette Moreno. No, I want to share this honor with you. I've never been as near to you before as I am at this moment. And you will always remember it. We don't need you. Sasha, don't be troubled about me. When it's all over, you can bring me some roses. Leave us now. Quickly, every second we have is precious. Every drop of Derma 28 represents months of work and anxiety. And when the day comes when we can prepare it as rapidly as we do Derma 25... Give me your arm. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? Hello, I'm Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. with Mr. Roger Rotin from the Sebastiani Theatre. Sebastiani, that's a hard word to say. It is. I like it, though. It's Italian, right? Exactly. All right, well, before we talk about that, this film. So, she's in a crash, and this man, scientist, is going to help her. 
somehow. You know, this reminds me of that uh, movie, The Brain That Wouldn't Die. Have you seen that one? No, I didn't see you that one. It's the same thing. You know, somebody gets, a woman gets injured in a crash, and this mad scientist is using questionable means to make her well again. In any case, enough about the movie. We're going to see more of this in a moment. But you, Sebastiani Theatre, that's an old place. Yeah, it was built in 1933, opened in 34. 33, my goodness. Built by somebody uh, named Sebastiani. I yes, think. Samuele okay. Sebastiani. And, and that's a wine family. It is. And they're in Sonoma, California, which is like the heart of the wine country, right? It is. It's, it's beautiful there. Santa Rosa and Napa. Yes. What a wonderful place. And so what do they call it, Valley of the Moon? Yes. It. Valley of the Moon. So why did he build it? Uh, he just thought the town ought to have a, a theater, and so he decided to build it. And it was during the Depression, and uh, he went out and got some architects from San Francisco and built a really nice theater. So was he like the patriarch of yes. the town? Yes, yes. So he was, he was spending his money for good and not for evil. That's right. That's wonderful. So he built this theater, and he, he let everyone go for free, right? No, I don't think no, so. No. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of patriarchy can only go so far. That's right? true. Then it becomes kind of stupid if you give it all away. So this theater was started as movies or was it like? Yeah, just about all movies at first, even though they built it with a full fly system and everything else for live productions, it was mainly right. just a movie theater. Right, right. So the stage was always there though? Yes. Oh. An right. orchestra pit also. Oh, there's an orchestra pit? Yes. I didn't notice that. I mean, there were, I've never seen an orchestra there. I, I guess you don't employ them anymore. Well, it has been a few years, but we used to. We did some operas in there and we, at that time, Oh, we, we have that. a stage that's thrust over that part of the uh, of it now, so that you don't see it. That's why you haven't noticed it. I absolutely love opera. You know, the opera isn't over until the slightly overweight woman sings. That's <laughs> what that, they tell me. That's what they say. I'm not entirely sure if that's accurate. But <laughs> yeah. I've never like participated in that. So, how did you get involved? Uh, basically, it was the uh, theater was having a real rough time, and uh, back in about '86, and mm -hmm. uh, another lady was running it, and I just kind of went down one night. To, offered to help her out if I could, said, let's do some live performances and uh, maybe that would, you know, get things going. So I uh, uh, had a variety show and then uh, some people wanted to do the, the opera in there and we did that and then the fire marshal came in and said, uh, I don't think you can do that anymore because we was all the codes were uh, not up to code and so um, I actually helped form a nonprofit that raised money to put a sprinkler system in and uh, upgrade the electrical. So that's, that's how I, I had no intention at that time of ever running a theater. So, so you turned it from a, a nonprofit dangerous place into a profitable, safe place to have fun. Uh, the profitable part, I wouldn't say, but, uh, right. <laughs> but a well, safe place. It's yes. doing better, right? It's uh, definitely struggling, but it still is doing better, and we've got a lot of plans for the future, so uh, we, we're excited. Well, the future, the future is always good. I mean, it's got to right. get better, right? All right. Well, speaking of the future, let's watch this Adam Age vampire progress, right? It's got to get better, maybe. Who knows? All right. You guys stay with us. Hopefully, the movie will get better. I don't know. Yes. There is no doubt. There is not the slightest doubt any longer. You see? It removes every trace of the generation of cell structure. This is the day that comes but once in a lifetime. That is our lifetime. That's right. I shall always remember everything you've done for me. Thank you. Tell me that in some other way. Tell it to Monique, not your assistant. We'll celebrate this evening. No. Let's both stay home. Together, with our records. One moment. Why do you look at me that way? For a moment there, you seemed to be performing some sacred ritual. Yes, it was a ritual. Come. Is this Professor Levin? So 
So you've come to us. I'm happy to see you. And your luggage? In the check room at the station, as you instructed. Where's the ticket? Here it is. Are you sure that no one knows you've come here? Positive. Go and pick up her luggage. Let's go into the study. Professor Levin will join us in a moment. But this isn't like a clinic. No, it's not a clinic. It's the place where Dr. Levin studies and does his work with me to help him. Come now. Show me your face. Show me your face, I say. Oh. There's no doubt of it. Yes. She's disfigured forever. As if by a cancer that's beyond control, like leprosy. There's no one who can help me now. No one. Let me go away, please. I give you my word that I will restore your faith. Restore all your beauty. You're worse than all the others. Because you want to deceive me. Don't talk like that. Now, pull yourself together. We have succeeded in discovering a great secret. The secret of spontaneous reproduction of living cells. It's the secret of life itself. And the secret of life and also of death. Just now, I deliberately spoke of cancer, of cells which proliferate unexpectedly at the expense of the organism until they have destroyed it. Well, with this remarkable discovery, we have succeeded in creating spontaneous reproduction of cells. We can rebuild cells which have been destroyed. We have tamed the monster which once devoured us and made it serve our own ends. You must be now. It's a miracle. And you'll be the first person in the world to benefit from it. I shall perform this miracle. <laughs> I've never believed in miracles. I've even forgotten how to pray. Oh, please let me go now. Rather than go on, I'd prefer... <laughs> You'd prefer to kill yourself. <laughs> if you've given up all hope, why didn't you do it before this? You're condemned for the rest of your life. And you know it. She knows. They all told you that. <laughs> all right. Let me kill myself. Right now. <laughs> if you really are so desperate, take your own life if you want to. Yes. I'll give this back to you. But only on that day when you look me in the face and tell me that I failed you. Do you understand, Jeanette? But until that day comes... <laughs> Will you try? No, no, I beg of you. <laughs> She's fainted. I've had a room prepared. Oh, I'll bear. And now we must take her upstairs. She's a beautiful human specimen. Beautiful? Didn't you hear about it? No, I didn't hear anything about the accident. I was at sea. We had just sailed. But... You mean today she had all her belongings collected from the hotel tour and had them delivered here at the clinic? It's all beyond me. She told us she was going back to that apartment hotel where she lived. The same hotel tour. Jeanette must still be in town. Oh, it might mean that she's gone away. There can only be one explanation. As a nurse, I'll have to betray a secret. Janet Moreno didn't want you to see her again as she is. Pasha! Pasha! You let the generator go out? You drunk! 
的人请求。is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you. I look forward to seeing you soon. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. Watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Roger had to step up for a moment, and we're going to take this opportunity to read all mail from you, right? Yes, right. indeed. He doesn't like this segment. Well, you kind of like it. I mean, you like reading the mail when it comes. You should see him when he goes to the mailbox. It's funny. He's like a child on Christmas morning. How often do you get letters? Oh, well, I get them all the time, according to you. All right, enough detail. Let's talk about what's in your hands. This first one is from two people, Ron and Cheryl Dill in Vallejo, California. 
and they say, Dear Vincent Livingston and Tangella, we look forward to watching Creature Features every week and have been watching since we were newlyweds in the early 70s when Bob Wilkins was the host. For a moment there, I thought they were going to imply that we've been doing this since the 70s. I wouldn't be old enough to do it since the 70s. We enjoy your guest interviews and even purchased the book Where Monsters Walked after you interviewed Raymond and Gail Orwig. That's right. Remember we had them on. They did that wonderful book about uh, different places where movies were filmed. Well, I'm glad uh, you guys got uh, Ray and Gail's book, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, your loyal viewers, Ron and Cheryl Dill. Well, thank you, Ron and Cheryl, and I hope you're having a wonderful evening. What do you got next? Oh, you've got that one again. You know, that is probably one of my favorite ones you have, Tangela. I, I don't want to take it from you. It's better than the ugly baby. She hasn't brought up the ugly baby in a while. Did she finally burn it? I'm trying. Oh, no. Well, she's, she's the one that burns the toys. All right. This one is from Gary Angelo in Modesto. Angelo in Modesto. I wonder if they planned it that way. Alliteration. Rhymes with this city. I like mm. it. Dear Creature Features, Thank you for giving me something to do on Saturday nights. You know, whenever I get this statement, I, 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 I grow rather sad. I, Gary, I hope you have something better to do on Saturday nights than watch our show. I mean, you, you should, like, go, go to the real theater, maybe. Or go to the roller derby. These guys aren't even listening to me. All right, he says, uh, I love the movies and the guests, but have one question. How does Vincent maintain that beautiful tan in Bodega Bay? Well, so, you know, it's foggy here a lot, but it's sunny sometimes too. And I go out on the cliff sides in my Victorian era swimsuit. So my tan is, is it's, what well, they call it here, farmer's tan? Farmer's tan. It's a farmer's tan. I have a farmer's tan, but I don't farm, believe it or not. She farms. She has goats. I think that's Thank more than they care to know. That's right. Thanks for writing, Gary. All right. And this next one is from Thor Cameron. That's a real name. Thor. Icelandic. I like it. All right. He goes, uh, this reminds me of a local show back in Colorado as a kid. The fun and quality you pour into this show gives me hope that you'll be around a long time. Well, I hope to be around a long time. Well, he means the show, right? He's been around a long time. He's old. By the way, as a teen, I had a Prince of Darkness poster on my bedroom, which drove my Baptist mother crazy. Well, I imagine it would. So he, he's a fan of my band. He, he liked my band. How nice. You, know, you see the dry look he put on his face when he said that? Thanks for writing, Thor. We got more. We have one more. One more. All right. Another one from San Jose, from Scott. He does not say his last name, which is okay. It could be Scott, right? That's could be a great Scott. It's a common surname. Vincent, I love your show. I love Tangella and Mr. Livingston. I would love to hear some of your music when you performed. Would you please play some, or better yet, perform it on the show? No. Well, you know, I get asked this question all the time. You said you've given it up. I have given it up. All right. We could play him a small clip, a small sample. All right, you ready for this? Here we go, Scott. One and only time for you. So you now understand why I quit music. That's it for letters, right? Right. All right. If you'd like to uh, send us a note, email it to us at this address. And if you'd like to put it in the mail, send it to us at this address. And we'll read it and we will uh, maybe put it up on the air, right? Perhaps. He's so skeptical. We'll be right back with Roger and the Sebastiani Theater and this film in a moment. First, the derma must be applied through an incision. Scalpel. Swab. Clamp.
Derma. Nothing. It has no effect. What can we do? Derma injection. My car. Not a drop of the serum left. Five injections without any effect at all. And I know I was not mistaken. They took effect on you. Because then you applied it immediately. In the case of cells that are destroyed, you will have to make continuous applications. Yes, perhaps you're correct. But it will take months to prepare serum enough. Let's send her away. We'll find another subject when we've a new supply of Derma 28. And let her go around telling everyone what we did to her. We'll have to kill her. And besides, what if the Derma-28 should have some unusual effect on her? Don't forget we derived it from Derma-25. I can't bear to think of her becoming a... A monster, is that it? You worry too much about her. Albert! Look there! Janet! I never had a moment's doubt. Bring me something to drink, please. Albert. If you don't mind. Toast to our victory. First, take her upstairs. Albert. Shock is completely over. There can't be any more doubt of it. We've won. Doesn't it please you? Yes. But right at the moment, all I'm able to feel is sheer exhaustion. It's as if I were afraid. Of what? Will there be after effects now? Will the regeneration of cells continue as it should? I'm sure it will. Have I slept too long? Yes, Jeanette. It's Professor Levin, the man who has... Give me your hand. life itself. Jeanette!
Get back in bed now. You have suffered great physical shock with all this. You've recovered, yes, but we must wait a bit. We must be certain what the results are. Absolutely sure. Don't doubt it, Jeanette. The miracle has happened to you. And you will remain with us until we are sure that we can proclaim it to the entire world. I've prepared everything, but what's to be done? <sighs> if there were only a single drop of it still left. But there isn't any. I refuse to give up now. We'll try radiation. Have you gone mad? Yes, yes, I know it's madness. But I'm willing to take any risk for her. You know very well it's useless. Her scar tissue is forming again, and radioactive treatment is effective only against Derma-25. Jeanette. She mustn't suffer like this. But there's always surgery and insertion. You're out of your I mind. That's it. It's the only possible solution. I'll transplant directly from another human being those glands which produce Derma-28 from another woman, a young one. Out there. You must be insane. You've gone mad over her. I gave you my solemn word. No, I know that I can't trust you. How will you ever accomplish it? By murdering the first woman that passes. And if the actor picks a new different, you'll kill another woman and another. But I refuse to be your Monique. accomplice. And if they ask for the truth, I'll die like that, you hear? Monique, come back here. Monique! Monique! Listen to me, Monique. Stop it. We've already said enough to each other. She's lying down there alone. It's not possible to save her. What can we do? But I am still here, and so are you. What more do you want of me? Sacrifice myself for her? You're impossible. Yes, it's true. I'm infatuated with her. <laughs> but it will pass. Pass away. Not love, really. It's a sentimental complex. It's only a compulsion, if you like. I want to dominate the girl, to possess her creatively. You will have to help me in this also. Help me overcome this infatuation. Struggle along with me, as you always have done before. Can't you manage to convince yourself she will remain like this? Like this? She has nothing to do with the two of us. I promise we will send her far away. Far away. I will forget her. We will start all over again and be successful. Please try to be the same intelligent woman you've always been. You know, I would kill a thousand times before I would admit defeat. Please be reasonable. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information.
watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. I knew he was a mad scientist. It was just so obvious. The man is a mad scientist. You can always tell in these films. It's just like they have that look on their face. It's just like a certain expression. They're smart and uh, they use their skills for evil, not for good. It was pretty obvious. You're it right. Was. It was. All right. We're here with uh, Roger Roten, and he owns, operates, is the ringleader of Sebastiani Theatre in Sonoma. And you were telling me during the break that you've had some absolutely incredible guests and events at this, yes. at this establishment. Tell us five or six or 10. <laughs> well, uh, start off with uh, when Toy Story first came out, uh, John Laster came into the theater and- uh, The John Laster. Yes, the John Laster. And uh, he wanted to know if we might want to show that film there. And uh, of course, that, we didn't know anything about it actually at the time, but uh, it sounded like, sound like a good idea and so, we got to know John, and uh, we did a, a, a premiere there on a big night with the big lights out front, and uh, it was a big fundraiser. It's and Toy uh, Story. Yeah. So that was the first show. That was the first Pixar movie, and we showed the first one, and we've showed them ever since. We've shown all the Pixar movies, and uh, John used to always come on opening night and would uh, introduce the movie, and uh, so. How wonderful. Yeah. They, they never do that, like in Bodega Bay or Santa Rosa. How did how did you get this 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 blessing? Well, we just he lucky. must be a local. That's it. He's exactly. A local. He lives in Sonoma. Yes. All right. We're going to get the address so you can all write to John last time. <laughs> I'm joking. No, we would never do that. He's a nice man, I understand. He is actually. All right. And so, who else? Uh, well, we've had uh, Bruce Willis was there, Michael Keaton. Uh, Susan Sarandon, because what there is, we have a film festival there every year. That's how they're there, and so oh. it's a, a Sonoma uh, International Film Festival, and it happens every year. And we have a lot of great movies, and they bring in stars, and it, uh, it's a it's a great thing. So we're happy that we can help host that. That's fabulous. And you were mentioning there was something about Sea Wolf. Yeah, yeah we had uh, years ago in 1941. It was uh, a, a premiere of Jack London's story, Sea Wolf. And uh, so Ronald Reagan, uh, Edward G. Robinson, John Garfield. The Ronald Reagan. The Ronald Reagan. Of course, this is before <laughs> your time, right? Uh, just a little bit. I just guess. a little bit. That's too bad. But they all came and they uh, had the premiere there and they had a big party at uh, Jack London's place with First Charmaine had it, the party and then they all came to the theater. Jack London's place? I, I thought it burned down. Well, it did. It was quite a party. It was quite a party. My goodness, they brought the place down <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> Well, that's absolutely wonderful. So, is this an ongoing thing that you've got these big premieres that occur in Sonoma? Well, I mean, we don't have that many anymore. I mean, it was nice that we had John and that right. uh, got us that and, and uh, yeah. So, otherwise, we haven't had that many. But you do a number of other wonderful things which we're going to talk about in the next segment. But first, uh -huh. we've got to get back to this film, Adam Age Vampire. Sounds well, that's good. That's an odd name. It I've is. Seen no use of nuclear technology yet, but we'll see. Stay with us. Police Commissioner Bouchard, Professor Levin, aren't you? Have we met before? No, but your name is so well known. And your photographs, your television interviews. Miss me, Bube, pathologist. Marais, my assistant. I'm sorry we have to disturb you personally this way. You did telephone us, didn't you? I'm all alone here at the moment. Shall we go inside? Good. Chief, I'm out of cigarettes. Do you mind if I... Yes. Can't you go half an hour without smoking? What is it, Sasha? Why did you come in without knocking on my door? Did Professor Levin send you? I have a splitting headache. Oh, yes, the champagne. 
Where is Monique? What do you mean, Sasha? What's happened to Monique? No. No, it's not true. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Monique! Monique! Paralysis of the heart. It's quite obvious. Uh-huh. And she showed no symptoms? No warning beforehand? Oh, yes. I've kept her under special care for almost two years. I'll make out the certificate at once. Without an autopsy? An autopsy. I've already confirmed the diagnosis given by Dr. Levin. And out of consideration... No, no. If it's usual practice... Inspector, if the decision lies within my jurisdiction, I say no autopsy. Oh, no. If one isn't necessary. Absolutely not. She was from Cherbourg. Monique Rivière. You will find her identity card and papers in her room. She suffered from dizzy spells and palpitations. I should show you something. Ah, here it is. This is her most recent electrocardiogram. I kept it where she wouldn't find it. Better show this thing to our pathologist. For me, it's Chinese. <laughs> you know, Professor, I'd say I know you intimately. Oh, does that amaze you? Well, it doesn't take a long white beard to be a scientist and a famous one. But I know your articles, I've read your interviews, and I saw you on television when you returned from Japan. Oh, by the way, these strange-looking bottles, are they from... Yes, Hiroshima. A process of deformative fusion of bottles, glasses, and ceramics near each other. The people of Hiroshima sell them as souvenirs. Well, anyway, it's a rather shocking sight. And did you remain a long time there? Sit down, please. For eight months at the Japanese Institute for Radiological Research. Oh, how interesting. Please. Uh, thank you. I gave up smoking. Then you've had a close look at those poor creatures. Certainly. And from then on, I've devoted my life to such research. What research exactly? Are you acquainted with the field of genetic mutations? Yes, vaguely speaking. Frogs that after the atomic explosion produce frogs with two heads. Exactly. Suppose that mutations could be made permanent or not, as we please. Imagine, if this were so, what extraordinary developments it could lead to. What you mean is exploit the horror by extracting its advantages. The bad, which justifies the good, is that it? More or less, I suppose. During your television interview, you showed some photos that were most interesting. Oh, yes. They're in this album. May I? Please do. Mm. Poor wretched people. And the psychological consequences in these victims? That's a most intelligent question. Well, the relationship between body and soul has not yet been established. Mm. A problem we can let go by, I think. Or am I wrong? Well, then, Doctor, I've made out the certificate. Paralysis of the heart. What's that? She's dead. Stop! Stop! Let's go to the police! I'm glad to be alive. Thank you for making me so happy. I didn't want you to get the impression that you're a prisoner there, on my account, through necessity of keeping everything a secret. What are you looking at? The water. The water? Yes, I'm sorry. Isn't there any music? Jeanette, you're so distant. Oh, Albert, please don't make me explain. All right. 
No, no one can suppose that the escape from the zoo would lead to tragedy. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instincts, could have killed the poor music. girl with such savage fury? There is no doubt that the girl Found there. Her huh? was a victim of the gorilla which escaped. What is it? I feel cold suddenly, and my face is burning like the other night. The night, Monique. Don't get excited. We are going back home. I wonder what it is. Put them on now. Your glasses. Annette is upstairs in her room. She won't wake up for several hours. But I want you to watch outside her door and don't move from there till you see me. Put this stuff somewhere else. I must save her at any cost. I give my life to save her. There's always one way. Insertion. Transplant the glance of another woman to the young one. What more do you want me to do? Sacrifice myself for her? Yes. Another one like Monique. And if the after effects are the same. Another and another until I save her once and for all. But I don't have the courage. I don't want to kill again. Everyone knows you, your articles, your interviews on television. Yes, I know, I know. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instinct, could have killed the poor girl with such savage fury? Yes, number 25. Exactly, number 25. Can create a monster. A monster who doesn't fear killing, who doesn't suffer as it's killed. Santa Rosa. Um, you read my letter. You called me Anthony Supreme. Um, love the opening title and love the new stuff you put on before the commercials. Um, keep up the good work. Love the show. Thanks. Bye. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. 
Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. You know, Roger, this, this whole monster transformation sequence reminds me of Lon Chaney in, in The Wolfman. The same, like, dreamy. It, they, they did not have CGI back then, did they? They didn't. 1960. I guess they would not. All right, well, it should get more interesting, maybe. About your theater. So uh, we were talking to our producer, Tom Wersch, and he had told us about this thing he was shooting at your place, your Sebastiani Theater. And... Uh, We've got a clip from this, but I want you to tell the story because this is quite interesting. Well, basically, of course, we did premiere both of his uh, haunted films that he showed at right. the theater. And uh, afterwards, he was going to do a video for uh, me in the theater. And so we did a lot of shooting. And This was a promotional thing he was doing yes. for you. And, uh, yeah. and then during his editing, he, he came across uh, this light going out of the wall and, and entering a... So the reason, though, he, he was involved in your theater with his films is because it's been said that your theater is haunted. Exactly. By ghosts. Yes. And that's, uh, I, What else could it be haunted by? Like <laughs> bad television reception, maybe? Or like, you know, no cell service? No, it's always ghosts when they say haunted, isn't it? That's it. It's, that's all it is. All right, I've seen this clip. This is incredible. We're going to show it right now. So this is this is just like B-roll. B-roll, nobody in there but the cameraman, me so and Tom So he sets up outside. the camera in the theater. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful theater. And he just let it run for a while. A minute and a half. And this is what we got. Let's, let's cut to this clip. So we see this clip, and we see the stage, and then we see... Something coming out of the wall, and it flies by, and it goes into a vent. And now let's let's show that again close up so people could see better. And there it goes, right past and into a vent. So some people think that might be a ghost. Yeah, and I don't know myself for sure, but uh, it's kind of unexplainable. So what are the other ghost stories? Well, there's a lot of different stories. I, I don't how many of them, which ones are true or not, but uh, but do any of them in, involve flying into a vent? No. All right. No. Falling off of catwalks and uh, off the balcony and those types of stories. Uh, uh, although I've never found anything to correct. So when you work there late at night alone, are you scared? No. No. Well, I, I'd be. <laughs> Especially after seeing that clip. Well, you know, there's been a lot of things sometimes that happen. You don't know how, what they are. But uh, whatever is there, it's, it's got good energy. So that's the only thing I know. So right. if there is that's a ghost important. there, I feel good All about right. it. All right. There's no demons. No. All right. No. All right. Well, speaking of demons, why don't we get back to Adam Age Vampire? Because it's it's like demonish. Sounds sort good. Of, maybe I don't know. Off we go. Adam Age Vampire. Stay with us. Young lady. Huh? Hey, it's late. Come here. I'll give you anything you ask. All right. You really gave me a turn. What are we playing? Hide and seek. <laughs>
be? Are you convinced now? Oh, but... Think calmly. And without this obsession for your looking glass. I know, you're thinking of yesterday. I'm still upset myself. You're afraid the cure will not be permanent. But you're mistaken. Now it's only a question of cell growth. I've already solved this problem. We must allow the cells we've regenerated to achieve lasting stability, nourish them artificially for a time. And especially with a transplant. A transplant? Yes, it must be done. And it must be done more than once. Why are you staring at me? I told you I'm tired and upset. I spent the whole night working in the laboratory so you could wake up as you are. How many more times will you have to treat me? A few, very few. No one hopes so more than I do. You could never understand what it has cost me to make you well again. And yet, all I would have to do is tell you to make you realize how deeply I love you. Jeanette! No! Leave me alone, Albert. Please go. I must get dressed now. We can see each other later out in the garden. Very well, then. Hello? Yes, Lieutenant Mornay is still on board the Garonne. He's now in Cape Town. I have a communication for him. It's very urgent that I reach him. Could you possibly forward a letter? Certainly, by airmail. He has a stopover on the return voyage. Please, don't mention it. Excuse me, Sasha. I haven't any more cigarettes, and you know I only smoke this kind. Please go and buy me some. Uh, while you're at it, would you mail this letter? And get something for yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, please take it. Do take it. You will remember to mail the letter, won't you? Thank you. Dear my darling, nothing has changed between us, at least not for me, and I need you desperately. Pierre, I'm afraid. Thank you, Sasha. You did very well. Yes, yes, I know I can rely on you at any time. This letter of hers. No, 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 I won't say a word. But don't you permit her to be out of your sight when I'm not around, and disconnect the telephone the way I showed you. Sasha, this evening I have to do some work around here, and I don't want to be disturbed at all unless I call you myself. Do you understand? Oh. Run along.
Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Lisa, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm going to have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked, too. Hey. Sutherland from Power Rangers, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. You're positive that she's the same person. There's no doubt about it. And this one showing the scars was given to me at the clinic that sent her way disfigured forever. Yes, yes. The photographs are of the same girl, I agree. But I was referring to the person you met tonight on the waterfront. You don't think that... Oh, perhaps... no, Commissioner. It was she in front of me. But in the dark, with the fog and all. But I know her. I couldn't possibly be mistaken. There's no Jeanette Morino listed with the Bureau of Missing Persons. But she's not a missing person. She's here. I've seen her. She has no relatives in town, even if she'd been kidnapped. Listen, you know, I want to believe you. I remember the auto accident from which Jeanette Morino barely escaped with her life. But this story of a recovery is impossible. Yet she's cured. Perfectly normal. It's her same face. But who would be likely to hide such a miracle as that? Whoever it was who tried to kill me. For what reason? An hour ago, in Rue Dormé, Police Sergeant Brundell recovered a stolen automobile. This is the license number. Hmm. You want to rejuvenate me? How long has it been since I bothered about stolen cars? The same automobile, a short time before, just about the same moment the assault occurred, was stopped for speeding on the Esplanade, where it passes the waterfront by Patrolman Cholin. Inside, as well as the driver, there was an unconscious woman and a doctor taking her to the hospital. You see? Check the hospital. I've already telephoned. There's no record of her. Maybe he was taking her to a private clinic. The name of the doctor. Well, Cholin didn't bother to ask him that under the circumstances. It could have been a doctor who commandeered the first automobile he found. Or a clever criminal who would say anything to avoid identifying either himself or the woman. Jeanette. Perhaps. But there happens to be a real doctor who might give us some information about this miraculous recovery. Will you let me come with you? Yes, but on one condition, however, that... No, I'll tell you in the car. Ah, good evening, Professor Levin. Please excuse us if we're... Oh, this is Police Sergeant Durand. Marais, I think you already know. Excuse the interruption if we're disturbing you at this hour, but passing in front of your villa, I thought, why don't I leave it up to you, Professor Levin, to clarify a scientific problem we have? You were so extremely kind to me when we met each other that time before in those unfortunate circumstances. Oh, yes. My poor assistant had passed away. Monique Riviere. You may go, Sasha. <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> He's a strange one. He's my factotum. Cares for the garden more than anything. Mm -hmm. A mute. 
the soul of fidelity, an expert with flowers. The classic one to suspect in a mystery story, if there were anything to suspect him of. <laughs> May I offer you a drink, Inspector? Yes, yes. Let's be comfortable. We must try to make it easy for Professor Levin to forget that we're policemen. Did you notice these bottles? He got them as a souvenir of Hiroshima. Interesting, aren't they, Duran? <laughs> you don't have to blow smoke under my nose. Excuse me. Here you are. Thank you. If you please. Now then, Inspector. Ah, I'll make it brief. Look here, Professor. Have you been following an A-class squad? All that Tommy Rod about Sadoc, the monster? Not so, please. Tommy Rod is the right word for it. Cheap, sensational journalism. Chief? All right, go out and smoke. If you don't mind, that is. But I... I still don't comprehend. The time before, I asked you a question which you were kind enough to say was intelligent. About the psychological reaction of the victims of an atomic explosion. Well, then, perhaps my own supposition will be an absurd one. But think of the ships that arrive here from Japan. And this, uh, said Doc. Is it possible that he's one of those? I see. You've been impressed by the recurring factor in these cases of the wound from the throat to the sternum. The obsession of a vindictive-minded man who has been poisoned or disfigured forever by atomic radiation. One might even say, a vampire of the atom age who wants to recover. Exactly. What do you say? The hypothesis is melodramatic, but not to be excluded. You just said the hypothesis is melodramatic, but the fact that you don't exclude it altogether puts me, how shall I say, more at peace with my own conscience. We mustn't let our feet get too far off the ground. Chief, the photograph? Ah, right. Excuse me, I had another purpose in coming here to see you. Look here. Examine these two photos. Do you believe that a woman reduced to such a state as this might recover altogether? What I mean is without any scar, without a trace. I should say not. This state of disfiguration is permanent. Nevertheless, Professor, Let I... Let me do the talking, Duran. Nevertheless, there is someone who swears that he's seen this woman the way she was. That's impossible. And if there did exist a cure, I don't know, a process we never heard Any of. Any man who had discovered one would be a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, I'd be the first to envy him. Mm, I imagine so. All right, then. This other photo, which was submitted to me as proof of her actual recovery, must have been taken at some time prior to her accident. It is. The signature was not dated. Ah, right. It wasn't. And besides, even if it had been, it could easily have been faked. Professor, I'm ready to swear that the... Duran! We've been disturbing you long enough. We're most grateful, Professor. I'll accompany you. Marais? Ah, we're leaving. Duran! Professor, you must feel rather lonely here. Such a big house. Don't you have a new assistant? Do you think it's so simple to find one? And moreover, I'm enjoying a period of repose right now. I merely study for relaxation. You know, Professor, what I envy you is your gardener, Sasha. Really? A bit difficult to believe that. No, it's just that I'm a flower gardener on my days off. Imagine, Inspector, he even works at night. Maybe he's expecting a frost. I know what you mean. You're dying to have a look inside that greenhouse. But I don't think at this hour... No, 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 indeed. Sasha would be delighted to have you look in. I'll wait for you in the car. What for? Why don't you come too, Duran? This way. This is Sasha's kingdom. There are his plants. There are his roses. Sasha, you're honored. These gentlemen have come to admire your beautiful greenhouse. It's really beautiful, too. Well, you ought to know. Flowers. Nothing else of any interest. Sasha is always busy with him. He doesn't even have time to read mystery stories. Yes, and no wonder. Well, good night, Professor. And excuse us again. Sasha, accompany the gentleman to the gate. You're on. Aren't you coming? Good night, Professor. Good night, sir.
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Me hearties, I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are still watching the Adam Age Vampire with Mr. Roger Roten, operator of the Sebastiani Theater in Sonoma, California. You know, I love Sonoma and I love theaters, but this movie, I'm not entirely sure I love yet. I mean, you've got these detectives that cannot figure out what's going on. They've obviously got some kind of serial killer going on and they're like, it's like Keystone Cops. If they had Lieutenant Columbo, it's an Italian film, and he was Italian. You'd think they'd have some kind of Lieutenant Columbo. All right, well, we're, we're not going to analyze this film further, because I want to talk about this event you had recently at your theater, and it was fantastic. I was there. It was, it was uh, about a 30-year dream of mine. It was to produce a show uh, based on the old-time medicine show, and so it was called Dr. R.K. Roten's Magical Medicine Show. And you had an actual... Wagon, yeah, like actual a, wagon. What yes. do they call those men? Magical. Medicine. No, the the men who would drive around town and sell the the potion elixirs and uh, elixirs. Uh, snake oil salesmen. Snake oil salesmen. <laughs> so is that what you were betraying? Yes. And I I did not know you were a magician. Yes. I learned that night, and a good one. He does like actual magic. We we probably should have had you do magic tonight instead of showing this uh, film, right? Next time. It would be more, yes, you will come back with cards and you, you were doing things, you were pulling things out of other things. Yep, we amazing. did all kinds of magic in that show. No, it was wonderful. But you had all kinds of things. You had a, a, a belly dancer. Beautiful belly dancer. And all kinds of singing and dancing and talent and, uh, and it was very well produced. It's a, it's a variety show basically and that's what the old time medicine men did. No, but it was just, it looked like something you would see from Hollywood in our so little town you. of Sonoma. Well, it was a lot of work and a lot of people. It was a, a collaboration of a lot of people and a lot of talent. So are you going to do this every year? I uh, hope so. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. No, it's a great show. And it's, it's, it's all live. It's all done. And it went off without a hitch. So, I never, you know, I, I, I did music for a number of years. Is and there would right? always be something that went wrong, terribly wrong. Like amplifiers would fall on people's heads. <laughs> it was, or like, you know, audience would die, things like that. But no, not, not in this show. It went perfectly. Well, thank you. All right. Well, speaking of perfect shows, we're not going to go to a perfect show, but we can go back to this film, right? Ah, let's get to it. All right. Back to Adam Age Vampire. Stay with us. I've already arranged for the body to be exhumed, and I must ask you to proceed without any further argument. Very well, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Garage, I want my car at the door in 10 minutes. Good morning, doctor. Hmm. You want a cigarette, Chief? Listen, Marie. I've just had an idea. I want you to keep that villa, Professor Levin, under observation. Why? Do yes. you think that... Well... Hi, Chief. You want a good lesson, huh? Put 
are you shouting for? What's wrong with you? No, let go of me. I want to get out of here. I'm afraid. Of me? Of the man to whom you owe everything and who loves you? You're not telling the truth. You want to go back to Pierre. But I'm going to save you now in spite of yourself. Yes, I want to go to Pierre. I don't care if I'm scarred for life, because I know now that he will love me anyway. You think so? Well, your scars are already returning. <gasps> Embryonic still and all but invisible. But if this action is not arrested almost immediately, you will turn into just what you were before. <laughs> yes, the thing will get worse. It will devour you bit by bit. It will transform you into an animal like a monster under the very eyes of your Pierre. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to. <laughs> Listen. I give you my word of honor. It will only take a few days, perhaps only one day, to make the final application. And then you'll be cured forever. Free to go where you please and with whom you please. If you're ungrateful enough to leave me for a man who has done nothing for you, you deserve nothing else. But until you're cured, don't try any more to run away. Don't try to see anyone. Will you promise this? Look here. I'll even give this back to you. You have no more reason to kill yourself. What is it? Who? The police. Inspector? Pierre. Who is here? Who is here? Pierre. Oh. Oh. Sasha. Let her go. Yes. Run to him. Let him see you like this. Go away with him as you are. Remember, I gave you my word and I shall keep it. It will be your decision then. In the meantime, you will help me to finish it. It is not Albert who is speaking now, but Professor Levin. I have to win, you see. This is all I'm asking of you. You wanted to see me, Sergeant? I'm sorry to disturb you. Why be sorry at all? Disturbances are part of your profession. I'm not really a policeman. Oh, no? Then please explain why you dared pass yourself off as a policeman and for what reason the commissioner... It was my fault. I was so anxious to learn more about your research that I asked permission to come with him. But on the other hand, coming here so late at night and not having time to explain... Sit down. What should you have said? That you had a personal interest in the case of that unfortunate young lady. What is her name again? Ah, yes. Jeanette Morineau. You know, you were not very convincing as a policeman. <laughs> yes, I guess I wasn't. You're right, Professor. It's true. The photo of Jeanette with the signature was really taken before the accident. <sighs> but I know I've seen her. I know it was she. She, Jeanette. Yesterday, in front of me. Beautiful as before. Where my ship is tied up. I talked with her just as I'm talking with you. And if they hadn't attacked me right then? You were attacked? Yes, and from behind. Because I know there's some mystery concerning Jeanette, and I was about to learn it. You love her, that is evident. I wonder if you had parted with her sentimentally, I mean, before you were actually separated. How did you know that? I'm also a psychiatrist. Don't forget it. You are now suffering from an obsession to find her again. You're capable of seeing her and every woman you run into. And perhaps yesterday on that very same pier where often before Jeanette was waiting after a long voyage... No, it was no hallucination. And how can you explain the attack on me? Well, maybe an attempted robbery. Yes, it wouldn't be the first time on the waterfront. See? And perhaps the night was foggy. Perhaps you'd also been drinking a bit. No, I wasn't drinking. It was she, all right. Will you please tell me what you wanted me to do for you? Please help me to convince the police. Tell them that this miraculous recovery is possible. They'll go on looking for her. 
And for a woman, not a phantom, that's to be excluded. Then you advise me to give up every hope? In your position, I would say yes. No. I love her too much for that. And I don't mind if she's ugly or disfigured when I find her. As long as I find her. And if you could find her... An entirely different woman. Yes. A woman who is no longer yours. Doesn't love you anymore. This is what I'm excluding. I see there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. I'm very sorry. Thank you, Professor. No, no, there's no need to thank me. Why should you? Sasha! Accompany the gentleman. I hope I see you again, sir. Goodbye, Mr... No, why bother to give me your name? I don't think there'll be any further occasion to see each other. You could hear his voice. All you had to do was open the door, and you didn't do it. I didn't do it because... You didn't do it. I was sure that I could rely on you. Now wait for me here. If I leave you alone, it's because I have to do still once more what no other man ever did for the woman he loved. Tomorrow, there'll be nothing here. Oh, if I could only tell you the truth. What do you mean, the truth? You must wait for me. I'll be back in a couple of hours. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever.
Oakland at the Kraken Con. You're, You're watching, watching North, North Bay, Bay TV. TV. Stay tuned. Yeah! <laughs> 
Take that man out of here. Well, come on, give me a light. a rather strange ending for a film it sort of had a dr Jekyll and mr hyde type thing going on there uh, would you like it love she likes all the films yeah you like you like guatemalan handshake she told me she did it's one of my favorite films don't make fun of me all right well mr roger what do you got going on next well, in December we've got uh, a Christmas Carol, and it'll I be love a live play. Christmas shows. Yes, it'll be a live play, and uh, uh, so that'll be coming up. And uh, in January we've got a big comedy show with uh, Will Durst and uh, the Will Durst, Johnny Steele, and uh, so it's going to be a great show. Oh my God! You know, it's like Hollywood, so close. Well, we should go to one of these, right? She likes comedy shows. And don't forget, we have uh, in November we've got Bullet. What's Bullet? Bullet uh, with Steve McQueen on the big screen. So, oh, you're showing yeah. it on yes, the. Yes, we are. Oh. So if you want a chance to see it on the big screen, I've never come seen on it down. on the big screen. I, yeah, I think great. I've seen it on HBO. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> no, it wouldn't be, and that's like, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go see that as well. You should have, you should combine all three, a comedy Christmas show featuring Steve McQueen driving very fast in San Francisco. <laughs> that would be a good one. I don't know. I might patent that, but I won't. <laughs> no. All right, well, how do we learn more? 
Well, you can go to www.sebastianitheater.com. All right, so that's www and Sebastiani with an I. Yes. Theater, Theater. With, with an R-E. R-E? Yes. Oh, the English. British way. I like that. Mm. Dot com. That's right. right. And right. We have a foundation, and you go to that, and you can find out ways to help the theater. Oh, it's a foundation as well. So you're trying to re sell donations. Yes, we're, donations. we're getting in the process right now of uh, doing a lot of work to improve the place. All right. Well, it's a wonderful place now, and if you can make it better, I like that plan. Thank you so much for coming, Roger. It's my pleasure. Wonderful guest, and we hope we can have you again. Thank you. And we'll see you at the the bullet screening. All right. I promise. All right. All right. And this for you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. You know we love it when you show up and spend time with us because if if you didn't then I'd have to watch these films with Tangella and that would not be fun. Hope to see you next week. So, Roger. Yes. You're a magician. Yes. I am. And you're probably good at magic. So I'm wondering, do you think you have the skill to make me disappear? Sure.